Greetings, Rose Lovers. My name is Rebecca Kratom, and I'm the U.S. Sales Executive for David Austin Roses in the United States. The thing that I have been impressed with the most as I do my travels across the United States is that David Austin Roses are extremely adaptable. And I think this adaptability has to do with their breeding program. So that's what I'd like to talk to you about in detail today. In the 40s, when he was just a teenager, David Austin was fascinated with roses, and soon his hobby became his life. He was beguiled by the old roses, but the modern hybrid teas were the hot ticket at the time. So he decided to order and compare both. To be honest, he was not charmed by the hybrid teas, but the young breeder did recognize that the attributes that they possessed were what the old roses lacked. They had a wider color range and they repeat flowered. This was his light bulb moment of realization that he really had the opportunity to create something entirely new, a rose with beauty and fragrance of his much loved old roses, but with the modern benefits of the new roses. Now, David Austin released his first rose, Constant Spry, in 1961, but it flowered only once. In 1983, he experienced his first real breakthrough when he introduced Graham Thomas, named for his friend and mentor. The response from the public and the press was overwhelming. Mr. A, as we dubbed him, credited Graham Thomas with being the rose that was the most responsible for the recognition and success of the English roses. The following year, he saw the first of many gold uh, medals at the Chelsea Flower Show, and the David Austin Rose Garden there became one of the highlights for visitors to see. Now, what were those attributes that made Graham Thomas so appealing? First off, it repeat flowered. It had a high petal count. It had lush, gorgeous, rich coloring and it smelt amazing. Now, if you're ever in England, this is your official invitation to come visit our display gardens. Here's just a hint of what you'll see, and not only will you see the famed Graham Thomas, but almost 200 varieties and counting of what we have developed over the years. You're going to spy old favorites like Charles Darwin, Scepter Dial, the fragrant Gertrude Jekyll, another fragrant one, Jude the Obscure, Darcy Bustle, and many more. I want you to keep your eyes open for Olivia Rose Austin, named for his granddaughter, Vanessa Bell, Desdemona, which oh, has wonderful old rose fragrance, Roald Dahl, named for the children's book author, Emily Bronte, and more. Now, if you are a true David Austin fan, you'll know that Mr. A never rested on his laurels. He was never satisfied with what had come before, and he was really committed to breeding the best roses for the future. And today, our horticultural team has that same focus and commitment. The process of creating a single new rose takes nine years and approximately 120,000 development roses. But the end product is worth it. And Mr. A and our satisfaction is to see the pleasure that these roses give gardeners and rose lovers around the world. So let's talk about fragrance a bit more. Did you know there are five fragrance profiles? The first being Old Rose, and that is the fragrance that we think roses should smell like. This one was Mr. Austin's favorite, and he loved Gertrude Jekyll for this very reason. Our second fragrance is Myrrh, which is found mainly among English rose varieties. That has a warm anise scent to it. 
Number three is fruity. That has a jammy berry or citrus scent. One of my favorite varieties is The Poet's Wife uh, because of that citrusy scent. James L. Austin is a little lighter in fragrance, but holds its color really well in high light. The fourth is going to be tea, and that's normally found in apricot or yellow-hued roses. It smells just like opening a fresh pack of China tea. Number five is musk. And what's interesting about the musk fragrance is that it emits its scent from the stamens rather than the petals. I'd go for a complex fragrance profile like the Generous Gardener or Malvern Hills. Now, let's talk about something for a second. I just said complex fragrance profile. A lot of roses will have multiple characteristics like old rose and myrrh. I want to read these descriptions to you and you will absolutely love them. So, Vanessa Bell, green tea with aspects of lemon and honey. Oh. Princess Alexander of Kent, strong tea that changes to lemon, picking up hints of blackberry. Sounds like we're buying wine or fine perfume, doesn't it? Desdemona, old rose with almond blossom, cucumber, and lemon zest. I'll take that as a cocktail. Boscobel, warm floral myrrh with hints of hawthorn, elderflower, pear, and almond. Well, I hope you could smell that virtually. My mouth is watering just thinking about those, but they truly are wonderful. And within those five fragrance profiles, we will rate the rose from a one to a five one being a very soft fragrance. There is a variety called Tranquility that we give a one because it smells like sliced fresh apple. Whereas something like Boscobel is very heady and strong and it really wafts through the air. So that is given a five. So it goes without saying that David Austin roses are versatile. We like to say they play well with others, which makes them perfect for using in a mixed bed or border. Combine different rose varieties with a mix of companion plants in varying tones, styles, and sizes for a border that looks fantastic year round. Roses are increasingly popular grown as flowering hedges. So as well as providing a valuable feature within the garden, they are also useful for creating garden rooms. Did you know that roses work especially well in containers? Well, they do. A patio terrace or paved area can now be transformed into an eye-catching oasis. And if you have mobility issues, this may be your trick for gardening. Never miss the opportunity to take the eye skyward. Climbers are great when ground space is limited too. And finally, with their natural, bushy, well-rounded growth, there is no better way to get fragrance right at nose height than with a tree rose. Here are five tips to guarantee that your David Austin rose performs its best. First, plant your rose where it will get morning sun and protection from hot afternoon sun. Number two, plant deep. You may not have been taught this originally, but trust me, the graft or the crown should be approximately one inch below grade. Deeper if you're in a really cold area. Number three, train your rose to become drought tolerant. Yes, roses do love water, but if you water deeply and less frequently, they'll be less dependent. Number four, feed as new leaves begin to emerge again at mid-season and one last time about a month before your final flush. David Austin roses respond well to sustainable practices. 
Number five, and this is probably my favorite, don't be afraid to prune. The more you deadhead, the more flowers you're going to get. David Austin roses are garden roses, so shape them to satisfy their position in the garden. And if you need to take the rose back more aggressively, don't be afraid. No one ever killed a rose, especially a David Austin, by pruning it a little bit too much. So one of the great pleasures of growing roses is cutting them and bringing them indoors. While garden roses will last a day or two inside, they don't have a base life of a florist rose. This prompted David Austin Jr. to spearhead the development of our luxury cut rose division. Bred to emulate the garden roses, the luxury cuts are specifically for the floral trade. So if you're looking for them, call your favorite florist. They're going to have a longer base life, longer stems, and they hold up better in shipping. The luxury cuts are a must for weddings, special events, that wonderful celebration of life or an anniversary, or any event that you just want to raise the bar on. Now, I will promise you this, if you are a bride who has carried David Austin's down the aisle, you are going to want to plant them in your garden. It has truly been a pleasure being a part of this event, and I hope you learned a little bit more about our breeding program and why it is so important to us and to you. From growing in our fields to growing in your garden, we do our best to breed, select, and deliver the very best roses for you to enjoy. Thank you.